We've been hearing about the goings-on at the courthouse in Melfort. Now we'll dive into a few of the details. So why did you think it took so long for CDU to enter a guilty plea? Well, from our perspective as defense lawyers, we need to make sure we review all the material. And this was, uh, according to the RCMP, a full three-month investigation that no doubt in included significant investigative materials that would have had to been reviewed by the defense counsel and the crown counsel. And I think prior to Christmas, is, there was a recent report that was generated uh, by the government that again was considered by the parties. So for all intents and purposes, this would be considered an early decision from uh, in our world in terms of the time required to review that material and uh, come up with a determination as to what to do. What about victim impact statements? There's so many in this case. Uh, will we hear those and what are you expecting? It's going to be up to the various victims uh, whether they wish to come to court to read their victim impact statements and present their, their, their story to the court or whether they want to provide that in advance. Uh, Victims Bill of Rights legislation allows anyone who is connected to the accident to provide their information to the Crown Prosecution and the prosecution can prevent can provide that information to the court uh, and no one's really prevented from from doing so. Um, if, as long as they comment just on how the incident has affected them and don't comment on what the appropriate penalty should be, uh, the court will usually hear those. And uh, I expect that there'll be some oral statements and that's likely why we've heard that a few days have been set aside. Otherwise, it would only take likely a few hours to complete a sentencing like this. So I anticipate there's going to be a lot of words from the victims themselves here. Okay, and do you know of any precedents in this kind of case, a crash with so many victims? I don't, and I, when this incident first happened, like many lawyers, become very interested in the potential precedential value of it and, uh, and other things, and so I did look uh, nationally to see if there's anything comparable with the number of victims. Most dangerous driving cases that we see involve other components, like substance use, uh, racing, other aspects of driving that are aggravating, and often they only include a couple of victims. This is a case that involves a significant number of victims. From my review of the cases, I couldn't find anything near that in terms of the number. So the sheer volume of the victims is something that's going to be likely unprecedented. But there's other factors here that likely are mitigating that we don't see in other cases. The most recent case that comes to mind involving multiple deaths in Saskatchewan is, is involves the Carrot River crash uh, with Mr. Lavoie that uh, he received a three-year sentence for multiple victims. The aggravating factor cited by the judge in that case was that he was speeding through um, a, a, a zone that was reduced speed because of construction during a time when there was lots of uh, discussion about how everybody needs to slow down at that time. So uh, a flag person was seriously injured and three individuals uh, lost their lives as a result and received a three-year sentence. It's possible the court would make reference to that case, but time will tell which par what the parties think the judge should review. Difficult decision, no doubt, for the court to make here, though. Certainly. I guess we'll have to see what happens in the next few months. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.